Hello! Today we're having a look at Abs and Greasefang, of which there are two fairly good versions that are pretty new to explore. The version we're going to look at today is Traverse Greasefang, which has been the more recent adaptation. It's a funny one where sometimes when cards get like reprinted, they start getting more traction. In Pioneer, Traverse has taken a bit of an uptick, and that's the way the matter's shifted for the most part. But there is another version that I might do a video later on down the line on, and that is with Eldritch Evolution. Uh, one green, green, sacrifice a creature, go find a creature with CMC2 more, put onto the battlefield. The evolution gets exiled, but the thing that you're getting is going to be the Grease Fang to finish your combo. Uh, and so, pretty powerful. That version, obviously, you're sacking away your Athena's Informant, and in that version, you're also playing like Stitcher Supplies, so you've got more creatures to sacrifice. That version is quite good, but what we're looking at today is the Traverse build. That's focused around using Traverse the Even World as a tutor. Uh, Traverse is green, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. But then, if you've got Delirium, so if you've got four or more card types in your graveyard, instead, search your library for a creature or land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Once you've got Delirium online, simply green, tutor for Grease Fang. There you go, you get your combo. Pretty powerful, pretty powerful. Let's start from the bottom up. So we've got our three copies of Traverse. Only three copies. Hey, a lot of the time it is still a me away from the land until you've got the Delirium online. And we've got our Thought Seizers to protect our combo, help disrupt our opponent as well, but take away your opponent's answers. Often Thought Seize plus Grease Fang on turn four, or Thought Seize, Cat Stay Away, Grease Fang on turn three are absolutely potent, and your opponent just can't really do anything to stop you. Then we've got three copies of Vessel of Nascency, another new pickup from Shadows over in a Shroud Remastered, and this one is really, really good at enabling Delirium that you need for Traverse. So green for an enchantment, and then one in a green, sacrifice it, you reveal the soulful card to your library, you can put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker card from among them into your hand, the rest is your graveyard. So enchantment is a rare type itself for delirium, but then it's also going to put more cards in your graveyard. At two, we have our Fiend's Informant, the old classic, one in a white, ETB, Connives. We have a single copy of Can't Stay Away, just one, hey, bit of mice. and then four copies of Grizzly Salvage, probably the best enabler. Black and a green, real top five cards, put a creature or land card from under your hand, the rest goes to your graveyard. Five cards deep, look for a Grease Fang, dump things in the graveyard. Excellent, if you need the third land, hey, it finds that too. All right, then we've got three copies of Wimbledon Command. It doesn't do any of the modes particularly well compared to the other options. The fact that it is so versatile makes it good. Uh, choose two, target player mills three cards, you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent, mana value two or less. Post-board, it gets rid of things like Rest in Peace. Pre-board, there's still some really nice Targets for that. Uh, target creature gets minus three, minus one. Hey, mana guys. Um, pretty nice there. And then target opponent loses two life, you gain two life. Sometimes, hey, you're playing against something like Burn or Mono White and you need to race a bit. Lots of versatility. And the last thing we're playing it to is Collective Brutality. Uh, one in a black, Escalate discard a card, so you get to choose more than one mode if you want to do that. Also, that discard ability also lets you discard your vehicles. First mode, target opponent reveals their hand, you choose an instant sorcery card from it, that player discards a card. Okay, nice, that kind of duress effect. Second mode, target creature gets minus two, minus two. Nice removal spell. X2s are quite important, this is aggro decks. And then that third mode, target opponent loses two life, you gain two life. Again, hey, if you're in a racing situation, that can bail you out a little bit. But also, yeah, it gets you to discard a bunch of cards if you want to do that as well. At three, we've got our four copies of Grease Fang and Keeper Boss. The centerpiece card of the deck, we want to get into play on turn three with the Econa Graveyard, bring it back, and either basically kill our opponent with Pyhelion, or start accruing a massive board state with Eskis Chariot. The two Sky Sovereigns give you some removal and really help you win the mid-range game plan when you don't have the Pyhelion just to win. Liliana Veil at 2, I kind of mentioned it before, having another card type is great. That discard for plus 1 lets you get the Pyhelion to the graveyard while attacking your opponent's hand. The minus 2 is quite nice versus some matchups. Vehicle wise, Fresca's Chariot for Pyhelion, fairly standard. The two Sky Sovereigns become pretty much the standard now, just being able to interact with the opponent's creatures, give you more targets for your Grease Fang. And hey, at 5 mana, it's very reasonable for just play. And then hey, ETB deals 3 damage, and then when it attacks, deals 3 damage, just immediately impacts the battlefield. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Mana base then. Three Temple Garden, two Threes of Edge Circuit, two Yoga Run Team, Single Lana Warriors, three Pathway, two Blooming Marsh, Golden Shrine, Courtyards, three uh, Caves, and then a Besaidu, Takakanuma, and a Swamp. The one thing here is that we've only got one base that's actually fine with Traverse, so we really are relying on getting the Delirium online. That is, that's what we're playing it for. Nothing really too tricksy here. Uh, no Django, but the Takanuma obviously can reset Grease Fang, and Besaidu is a really, really nice answer and somewhat free. Into the sideboard, creature interaction, we've got a few different things. We've got two copies of Fatal Push, we've got a portable hole, and also Raven Enfeeblement. Notably, Raven Enfeeblement kills coming against Grease Fang as well, like things like Mono White and Angels, it kills kind of all those relevant creatures. Uh, portable hole also hits non land permanents, whether that be like Wolf of the Haven versus Mono Green, things like that too. The Fatal Push is kind of generically good. A copy of Liliana, either 
matchups whether Edith effects are really good or versus things like Control where you want to attack by hand. Or copies of Lane of the Void for Graveyard decks, whether that be other Grease Fang, Dredge, which I've been playing a lot of recently, or other sorts. And then we've got a couple of Dresses. Oh, these are Mitch versions. Okay, well, we'll deal with that. Next, where you can look to kind of use it with, alongside with Grease Fang at the same time, whether that be Control or Midrange, where they're going to try and just hold up and to Grease Fang the entire time. Hey, you want to hold up your hands to Grease Fang? Well, I'm just going to take it and then play it. So, hey. Really strong there. And then a couple of copies of Vanishing Verse. Just a really, really efficient removal spell. Deals with all kinds of stuff. Is a fairly good catch-all answer. And then lastly, two copies of Shieldred. Again, you could board into this really, really strong mid-range deck and kind of board out some of the like more combo-heavy graveyard suggested pieces. With Shieldreds, the Eskis Chariots, obviously you've got Liliana's going up to three. Dice Sovereign even then, playing it fairly is still pretty, really strong. And you get to board into removal as well. You could play a really nice mid-range game plan out the sideboard. Nullify all your opponents, rest in peace, and other graveyard hate cards. So pretty, really strong. Grease Fang is one of the absolute best decks in the format there are a few different ways to build it but i think this is the strongest one at the moment definitely give it a look and we're going to hop into some ranked games if you're not already please do subscribe to the channel uh 80 of you aren't subscribed something like that anyway all right cool let's get into some ranked games all right into our first game here it's to be on the play nice do love that it's on the play we've got grissy salvage we've got grease fang we have a couple of vehicles we've got some uh discord outlets we could draw into or find off a of grissy salvage so it seems fairly strong to me should only leave a temple gone tapped. So let's use Blooming Marsh to accuracy the establish next turn and ideally have Grease Fang ready to go. Either way, it kind of gives away what we're doing. But hey, we'll pass the Grease Fang up. So far, we get a land, which at least gets us cast because it's carrying on four if they've got ants, what we're doing. They're going to play a shock land here, so fair enough, they might not let us kind of just do our thing. Um. Uh, Take Grease Fang. We're going to need a backup copy because likely they have a piece of interaction here, but we may as well force it out. Note that at Traverse now we've cast one enable kind of spell. It's already online. We have effectively four, th three copies of Grease Fang here. If they do have the removal spell or not, Fatal Push will not do it. But there are a number of other cards. Go for the Throat, all that kind of stuff. Otherworldly like that. It's got a card for that, so that's even better for us. Fair enough. And then onto them. Let me get to try them again next time. The question here really is whether we want to go Grease Fang again, or we want to slam the Chariot. I'm fairly inclined to slam the Chariot. It makes them kind of... I think it, it, it gives them a full sense of security with Gre us not having Grease Fang. And then if they ha don't have a clean answer for the Chariot already, they may have to tab up Okay, Absorb kind of gets around any of those problems. Sure. See, it looks to just be Esper Control. Oh, they're going to tap out for Shield Dread, which is, you know, not that unreasonable. We don't have. Hmm. Huh. So, because we can Grease Fang get back Esper's Chariot, they have to deal with the Grease Fang, and then we can also traverse. We maybe want to leave the Traverse. Or so that they don't know that we have a Rapine's Informant. Mm. Seems we, we can't do it on one turn anyway, right? We don't lose anything by making extra tokens, so we may as well do that. <laughs> I want to place additional pressure on the tap tap at the minute, so I think I'm going to cast this Traverse. Um, I'm not actually going to get Grease Fang. Is there anything better than the Rapines Informant to get? I don't think so. We'll do this. I think that's fair enough. This way we also get the Chariot back in the graveyard, so they have to deal with the Grease Fang, otherwise it's going to come back again. And obviously this time it's going to make a bunch more cats. Yeah. It's an interesting one with Esper. Because generally, the trade-off is that you play... You get access to more cards, but your mana base, your spells tend to be a little bit clunkier if you're playing three colors. Despite them getting like Fatal Push, it just means you, you're a bit more spread. But given, see like if I just saw Shieldred March, or I just saw Absorb March, 
without this shell dread. The main, the main next shell dread is a bit of an outlier to me. Like maybe they're playing a more mid-range strategy. Except for these absorbs. Which are a bit clunky if you're going to play like Esper in range, Esper, Esper Legends type thing. So, there is an Urtai. Alright. Fair enough. Hmm. Much thinking. Well, that's a combo. Oh, yeah. I'm, mm, they kill all of these. But, and they have one mana up. I think we just get the shoulder off the board, honestly. We have a lot going for us right now. We're well up on cards as well. That's a little awkward. I'm gonna cast the Frenzy Format before I cast the Traverse. I think that's fine. But let's go with the Pyhelion still. I wanna play this tapped. Um. Hmm. I would like to traverse them 40s next turn. If they're playing, it's it's really. Um, I was gonna say it's really unlikely. It's not impossible, but I think it's quite unlikely that they're playing their own hand disruption at least main deck. So I think we're safe to do this now. Alright. Yeah. See, it does appear to be Esper Legends. This absorbs sort of just threw me off for a little bit. They've got Skrull, they've got Urtai, they've got Shield Dread. Uh, let's lead with Fortsies. With a Boom Command, dealing with Skrull is also quite nice. I wonder what else they have. Maybe they have another... Ah, I see. Too slow. Right, yeah, we should take the Obscure Interceptor. I agree. Cool. Make Grease Fang. Bring back Pahalian. We'll, we'll get this crewed up. Um, oh, happy attack on everything. The only other thing about this, I don't know what sweepers they could potentially be playing in main deck. If any, because again, they're very creature based. Non land powers with Maui for a less strong one for Maui. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maui for less. I thought it was. I'm gonna thought it was ourselves here. Get the part having gone. Bring Pahalian back. Pahalian come closer, can Pahalian come back. Better is that. This is now online, but they're effectively dead. Unless I've really misread something. Seems good, certainly. Get a combat. Come across the aisle. Make some more angels. It's been a while since I played Grease Fang, actually. A little while. Every now I go back to it, I'm like, oh, I forget how fun this deck is. But then you, you play against it and you're like, oh. I just had it on turn 3 naturally again for no reason. Ah. Uh, the the mismatches your S's are going to annoy me a little bit. That's fine. So, hmm. They have Scrubs. That's interesting. The two mana creatures. I think these Boom Commands are better than maybe it would be. But then also, they're not playing tons of creatures, so the Lily on Aida to that should be pretty strong. Pretty good. We're expecting some graveyard hand. I think we just kind of bought into our mid range game plan. Mm. There's Shield Dread. There are a couple of multicolor things. Nothing that's like too sensitive. Let's see. I don't like Brutality versus. Brutality is at its best versus aggro and creature decks. Yeah, the dress ability is fine and we're boarding in all the dresses, but it's a little more inefficient. Mm -hmm. The other modes are not great and doesn't take some of the important cards, especially because they're more creature based than we'd expect. This Rain of the Field maybe actually is. Uh, Shield Red. It kills some stuff, but not others. 
It's better than Fatal Push, but I don't know if it's if we want it. Because we need to board out quite a lot of cards. We go full on the mid range plan. Guys, someone doesn't actually kill very many of their creatures. So I don't mind doing this. The Pahalian. We cut down on some stuff. This isn't really catching much. No, oh, they're bringing rest in peace. <laughs> be that be bad up, boo. Three more cards. Some of the we want to go. We just get some of the recipe. Someone inclined to say like, "All right, we need to we like leave some of the stuff in." But at the same time, um, yeah, I want to do. All right. So I'm like the we're gonna do fair grease map things. Have some answers for their threats. And if they happen to not have any graveyard hate, then we do have like hey. Just still do our escaling with Eskis Chariot. Like pretty reasonable. This is incorrect to not play the Casio Courtyard. But the secret is, is that if I play this now, I won't forget to play it on green the next turn. Sometimes it's about making sure you don't have the opportunity to misplay later. <laughs> as silly as that sounds. Just slam Kaito. Okay. Uh, we'll add a shield red. We already have a shield red. Not an interesting one. I think we take shield red just to mass a number of answers. But like this implies like some kind of tempo stuff's going on, which is you know interesting in itself. Um, that being said, I don't necessarily want to. I'm on it seems fun, but with the boom commanding to get some cards to the graveyard. Must deal with this. Seems decent. We could just make refair. Um, no, I'm being done. I should let Liana tick up, discard the chariot. Just put ourselves in position. And you think you can win, drop Okay. Because now they have to answer the Liana, and then if they don't if they answer the Liana, we can then respang Eska's chariot. Do that kind of stuff. Alright. Cool. Discarding Vito. Okay. Maybe should have taken land off of the. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, there's the Vanishing Verse. Oh, they do have two mana still. Hmm. All very interesting. Now this is a juicy secret. Yeah. That's annoying. I think this is fairly scripted. Danik is a menace. <laughs> it's uh, one sweet thing that you can do in S for you get access to all these kind of like pretty sweet legendary effects. But yeah, cards of graveyards come in time to spell their abilities. And the blue. Uh, a big march that cost of a card. Ooh, Wandering Emperor. That's a good one to know about the game of three. Okay. Yeah, beat down a bit here. We do have extra shield dread. Thanks. Hmm. It's pretty fine. I think this grease hang is turned off for the time being. I wonder if they have another answer. I don't know. Not literally right this second, apparently. Okay. Uh, 
That still looks just lets us look for some stuff. Interesting. Kai was sweet. It's interesting one where I think you can play like a lot of the Esper Legend Shell around Grease Fang. Obviously Esper Grease Fang is the deck in itself. You can kind of meet a bit halfway there if you wanted to. I think how things are kind of trending. Alright, I'm gonna make another ninja. Okay. Five mana. Yeah, so we have so many chances. Tons. Okay, they're on the shoulder. No, they're under a lot of pressure to find something. Let me draw here. Hmm. He's kind of trade even. Um. Get a land back or. The sea life might actually matter here. More than the mill effect. Except for like cost damage, doesn't really matter. I think this is fine. Just treat this. Yeah, I'm gonna shock, play the vessel. Try and find some kind of answer. Alright. We're in a sticky spot. I kind of forgot about the possibility of Danik. Well, that's be a pretty interesting game. You want to attack? Um, are they going to have a second children? Is that why they're offering the trade? Go find some stuff. I think we're kind of price split into blocking because we can't really attack backwards the other way. We should lose the race. Still kind of pressure to find an answer for Danik. Is it? Juicy secret, is it? Uh, well, Vessel. See what we find. And take a chariot. But Helen does answer Danik, actually. And the Kaito, which means it goes with the early Planeswalkers, means that it does have some more use cases. They've not shown rip, um, and so maybe, maybe we can don't need to worry about it. And should just be ball back in on Bahalian when we're back on the play. You know, others are being a little too risk of us. Okay. I mean, Kaido does keep drawing cards. I think this gets anything extra. You have very few answers to Danik. Maybe if you're playing like a traverse package, like a, a ravenous chupacabra is the thing you actually want. Well, not a thing you actually want. There are a couple of it, like really kind of out there ideas I thought of. One of them was playing Alex on the sideboard, which I might have seen actually. Um, I think that's pretty sweet, it's like a 1 of 2 to 4. Obviously, removal spells in general are generally are quite good. They're having something like a cheaper card or equivalent to deal with enemy permanence, pretty good. Maybe that's just Skyclave Apparition. 
Alright, well this isn't a lethal attack, but sure it's close to one. We've seen more cards first, but not like tons. They've gone pretty on areas and stuff. By looks of it. Now this is a juicy secret. I need to draw by how you. All right, let's let's go again. Let's change how we side boy slightly. Sorry, we didn't see any massive graveyard like kind of whammies, but maybe they just didn't draw any. Um, if human gets a bit better, I don't want to bring these fatal pushes in, but hey, okay. I'm more interested in this stuff now. So then we're back to the drawing board in terms of what we're cutting. Hello, Liliana. Oh, they are going. They went wide that game with Kai seconds, and they also have Wandering Emperor. So maybe it's. Excuse me. Not all it's cut out to be. I do like the dresses for that reason, though. And they also obviously take things like Rest of Peace if they just didn't draw them that game, and they saw it in this one. Um, The verses. There are a lot of more colored things, but being able to do with children is really nice. Choo -choo -choo. Mm. Okay, I think I'm on this kind of pathway. I, I... I need more Queen Answers to Denek, right? Raven Fleetment does that better than Easty. Better than Vanishing Burst does. But we still lose a slightly behind on cards. Mm. I'll do this. Alright. Cue it back up. Gonna so play Dress Eskis Chart. Is it really wide in mind? This is pretty bad. Um, I'm playing on the bottom. I think we kind of just had because of the card that I got playing. I think we just kind of had to keep this on um, six. No. And like, could consider going to five. Do I save the thought seas? Do we look to start getting first online? Do you end up traversing for land? I'd like to know a bit more. This is an opportunity time as well, because if they did like fall into rest of peace and have rest of peace, then that's a good one to know about. There is a Danic. We can get rid of that. Then we have a good answer for it. Um there's a nightmare as well. Oh dear. There's some pretty nasty cards here. I'm going to down and try and play around what they're doing. I'm saying the Nightmare because that's almost the next one pretty good. We have a clean answer for Denic. Yeah, I'm just going to play it out. I was a little worried if they just like, you know, wait a bit and then just veto our answer, but we'll do this now. That's two types. Two out of four. Four out of five lands. The cast of Sky Sovereign, which can get vetoed. Curious, so yeah, basically, is they tap out and just make Rafine. They're going to do that. That's fair enough. Um, so we are going to play our children. Cool. What? Can I have that? Haha. <laughs> 
Oh, well. Thus it goes, I guess. Uh, it's a veto. Yeah, we hit our land anyway. Should I play a wall behind the shoulder? And if they attack, it means that we'll be able to attack. I think that's okay. What does this turn into again? A 3 2 flyer. And like when things are put into graveyards, it gets investigates. Yeah. Uh. I just clock us pretty quickly. Ah. Oh. I actually hate this attack so much. I want to make them play to the board, right? I think so. If I block, they're going to like slam Denik, are they going to leave mana up for Veto, or are they going to do some other stuff? We we'll just can't afford to take four of Shieldred. It's the problem. You can burn any light turtles around. Maybe this is the bit that I messed up, or maybe the children just aren't good here. I was going to say they bounce off each other, but we don't. But I'm mean, not kind of more of a general thing. I'm going to cast this because it gets the third type into a graveyard, and they might counter it with Vito. Legitimately. Okay, well. I guess, to be fair, this isn't much better. For us. Than then just letting it resolve and not vetoing it. It does use resources. But it also is a clock. Mm. It's really hard, tough to side with us as these decks, but I probably could have done something a bit differently that was a bit better. I'm just trying to think what that would have looked like. This game is pretty much done. Any any grease thing I think you're on let me know in the chat how you'd have bought this. This deck is very sweet though. Mm, Hellion's not gonna get there. I mean, I cast this against V so uh, even worse. That is actually dead. Alright, I'm gonna play another game. I'll see you in the next one. Alright, Manchester City had a pretty close game there against Desperate Legends. It was a pretty sweet deck, to be fair. But, but unfortunately, did lose that. This looks quite interesting. We've got Vessel plus Traverse, which is a combination of cards that finds us a free stang, ideally. We've also got Chariot for the kind of mid range, more mid range kind of matchup, but uh, we'll, we'll lock this in. I'm going to want to lead on the Vessel. I think I'll just play it off the pathway. Reasonable. Ooh. Big Thoughties. Double path for the other side into Thoughties implies Grease Fang on our opponent's side as well. It did take Deska's Chariot though, which. Um, I'm not sure if that lines up or not. So maybe you could be on some kind of Delirium plant or something more mid rangey. Over in team double pathway. Oh, we're just going to look to sacrifice this now. Good pass, not going to report any information. Definitely don't want to do it straight away. Alright, that's a tireless track here. Gonna do this here. Gonna find our grease bag. Hmm. We're gonna kind of do our thing. It's for this reason why I was surprised that they took the chariot. Kinda looks like they weren't expecting these cards to lead into Grease Fang. Which is a testament to the Traverse version of the deck not being like a super well known thing yet. At least on Arena. But uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, we're by far still, still playing the game. Okay, 
Blooming Marsh. We don't have a way to get uh, these cards back to our graveyard. They can always eat one of these. But we know that we can very happily uh, cast our chariot again. I'm just going to tap the tokens. I don't see any particular need to um, kind of put ourselves out there. Yep, there you go. We'll go to 4 3. Story is always like, do they have the sacrifice going to fatal push? I don't like it this time. We'll make the caves and we're just going to replay the chariot here. Trophy on Reef is nice because we actually do have the basic. I say nice, but nice isn't the real way isn't really the right word, but um yeah. And we do have a traverse which I know about to go get another one. So again, the it's not in the graveyard yet. Now the vehicle said. So we'll see. They've shot themselves down to eight to make another clue. Okay, chat of their own. Oh yeah, the only players who are playing something similar to what they are. At least our opening hand. Okay. Oh, well, we have the Besage if they try and crew, but they actually do know about that. We can't do that one more time, can we? Anyway? In fact, I'm going to traverse it. We're going to get our Flames Informant. <clears throat> and we're going to get this into our graveyard because the, the Pyhalian into our graveyard because we can attack Anima for the Grease Fang later. I actually just want to use this to interfere. The one thing about this is that we're not really looking, we've not we've gone and done the Enable ourselves to use the um better 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 the Seiju this yet. I'll play Breaming Marsh. Do I still want to attack into this? Maybe I do, they're on eight. Basically, I feel like this way we're setting up for like Grease Fang Lethal next turn, regardless of whether or not they can save themselves here. And we're not losing out on that much by not besieging now. Okay, uh, they're going to two. Four, my bad. Uh, we'll play this. I'm trying the boards. Um. Yeah. So they're facing down a lethal attack right now, regardless of anything else we do. And then we can attack an Ema Grease Fang next turn. Well, the are the, uh, uh, coming turn. Interesting, interesting. So they're not sure there's tons. Well, no. Okay, no, I take it back. They actually haven't shown this to us. I've shown this a few cards and they sacrifice them, please. They don't have solid answers, that's what we're doing. But, uh, there's a tag on their side. Ah, uh, well. Not seals it. There's no way we get like hard enough to auto tap for this, right? I don't think so. Yeah, cool. 
I mean, they knew it was coming. Uh, so... I want the Jurassic, I have no interest in these real spells. The only armor I can be tempted by, the Shield Dreads again I can be tempted by. The Vanishing Burst is tempted by, but I don't think we actually want to do anything like that here. Uh, are they gonna have are they gonna have ley line? Are they gonna have scavenging use? What's the poison gonna be? Burst actually deals with both of those, which is one of the big things here. I don't like what the Wither Boom commands. They don't interact well with any of their creatures. They don't interact well with any of their non permanents. It's just like a put the top three in my mouse. Hello. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, don't mind me. That's brutality. I don't love. All right. Okay. Kind of off this. Off this. And then. Are we cutting? Just get out of the teacher bus. I think that's kind of reasonable. Alright. That's the other thing, that some lists offer between... I've seen lists with two, I've seen lists with three. I've not seen any lists with four. Also, really, everybody seems to have settled on three being the correct number of vessel in agency. And... I'm just gonna... believe that they are correct. Seems to be what everyone's doing. Okay... Thing six... I guess we just bomb dress. Yeah? I mean, in theory, pretty strong. We have the curve, so we're going to cast off some one instead of saving it. Oh, we'll get the scrap board, just get that out of there. This card's pretty strange. Plus, you can see if it has all counters, but taps to add mana, and then when it comes to tap, exiles cards from graveyards. So, actually, like, super nasty is this. We will, in fact, discard our Ascus Chariot. You back up three saying spicy. I like that. No blank. Yeah, fair. Or if there are other cards in land. Put it down with us. We're in a little bit of a pickle. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I gotta have something because I'm gonna play the Tyler Tracker. They might be just, you know, the classic Tyler Tracker thing of not wanting to play. Uh... Oh, the trophy is so brutal. Oh no. This swamp is huge. This swamp is living right and free. All right. No whammy. No whammy. No whammy. Let's see. Oh, they have it. Okay, so Shield Dread's coming down. Let's see what we draw here. They're on 14. I think I draw a step. Oh yeah, this Traverse didn't do anything at the minute. Doesn't even find lands. It's tough. This adds... Oh. Um, I kind of want to put it in the bin. It's a tough one, we're not actually like, racing them, but I actually do you want modes to get the Traverse online. Oh dear, okay. Now, now I feel stupid. Alright, that just happens. Fair enough. It's not Tyler's Tracker plus land. Ooh, no, okay. Getting aggressive, they're gonna bite in the old gods. This card's pretty sweet. It's better when you've got Tyler's Tracker in play, though. Kind of vanishing this now. Still have a theoretically unknown card in hand. Yeah, go blanks are really good magic card.
Oh. And then we're definitely finding out a lot more this time around. I'm gonna play this. I wonder if these are main deck or not, are they just coming out of the board? That's super sweet. Yeah, these are XR cards again, okay. You can get go black again. Wait, is that actually the third one? Okay, fair. I think if you're playing this kind of deck, you're very justified to just play four in the sideboard. I'm gonna take the Silas tracker, I don't want them getting, I don't want them drawing any cards off of it. I'm just gonna get it. Put this in the bed. Stop that. Should have played it earlier. No! Oh dear. Okay. So they have a bunch of ways to out of graveyard, as it turns out. And a hand. Uh, I lose love again. With that, all right. Let's go to game three. Let's think about this a little bit then. So they've got the two mana guys. They've got a bunch, of, a pile of go blanks. Um. So actually, I would rather have to cut to defiancy. Like to, what did I just say? Defiancy. Yeah. Um, in the deck. And maybe you want the in the sky sovereigns out by aliens. Given they have infinite ways to make this card. They're still not very good versus the Ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I do like cutting traverse here because they're just nuking our graveyard a lot. Mm. Yeah, we want to be winning the game with Sky Sovereign Eskis Sherry. I think having some Hellions in the mix is still good. But like, can't stay away from getting the bin. Maybe the Traverse are too bad. I think the dress is massively important. Um, I can't have Vassal 1 here. Seems we're taking the Traverses out. It's because it, it's because Ali only finds a land. And the idea is that after they've dealt with your grief thing and you kind of like, they dealt with your first set, it finds you then your your second one. We'll keep this. Thought Seeds into Oliana is pretty powerful. We've got the Grizzly Salvage. We can just find the combo as well. Okay, they have Mulligans. No, they're going to five. Okay. We might be top five game over man moments. We'll see, they're tanking on it though. So okay, what's we'll put back? Okay. All the no grown team into thoughts these. What are they showing? Both of these? I'll say this one is a bit more annoying. We do have removal cells for both. But the. Uh, the double Leon is pretty good. I'm gonna fire screws off the Grizzly Savage though and see if we can just hit. Good things. Because if it works, it works. Yeah, they're gonna wait on it. Um. I'll just take a shield. They have trophies and stuff. I think they're fine just going. Liana. I'm gonna plus one discard informant. Okay. I don't want to discard the Liana yet, just in case it's trophied, but if they don't kill it this turn, then I'll. Have it next turn. They've been the scavenging use. What? Things we'd rather. Oh, I see what's going on here. Huh? You two cards left. We get our land. Sacrifice. 
One of the children's train places. If this this car this last card is an invoke despair and they just draw the fifth land then or beside me. I don't know why I say things like that, it's always like I'm trying to cast myself. I don't want to risk the last card in hand being something good, so I'm just gonna cast this. A fight? And you think you can win? We'll discard the four seas. It's a fail push, okay. Keep using the other abilities. I think that's pretty reasonable. The XL like the Yeah, this guy's over from Graveyard. Alexa stop. One of your friends has to leave. Um I'm gonna keep this land card in hand because uh, to be fair, I don't know if there's a way to get out of this. But if there was, then hey. Also would like to take my own knife. GG's. Well, that's been Abs and Grease Fang with Traverse. Hope you enjoyed. I need to get around to playing more ranked. But hey, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel. If not, well, other, other than that, <laughs> have a great day. I guess if not, don't. But hey, yeah. 80% of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.